Yeah, here we go. Hold this for a second. Yeah. I brought you a great, powerful weapon to use against the Imperium. Here, activate it. <laughs> and you will feel its power shortly. <laughs> Be sure to not uh, move an inch. Now, now they're gonna emphasis don't uh, don't be blowing up stuff willy nilly because this this is a research uh, rich world they need for the yeah they want um, it they want the the planet intact yes right but, thank you dear um, there's a yeah they give you intel that there's a, there's a mining facility they lost all contact from it um, this is all your uh, I'll wait until it lost. I'll give. I'll make a handout. Probably be here. This will be. Uh, let's see. Mission. Two. So what's this mission two armory thing? That is your armory you can pull weapons from and use. I, I, I guess you guys were crafting weapons, so it didn't matter. But that, that's weapons that the uh, major has, has crafted for you guys. Mm. So I was gonna do the. <clears throat> Oh, your voice cut out real bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have some network issues. Uh, by the oh. way, I've che I checked uh, the the plant missile thing, whatever. Uh, it had a weight next to it, which was like one kilo. So, and it had twenty five requisition cost, like per that rocket. So, I, I don't think it's per clip of rockets. It's for one single rocket. So it's like oh, twenty eight requisition. Yeah. Okay, well, then it's, uh, I guess, 10 requisition for each crack missile, huh? Fun. Are we pulling requisition points for uh, crack missiles or for, what you call it, detox? Uh, I thought our apothecary had made a bunch of detox for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know if we need to requisition them or not. Also, I guess since we're going in with so much uh, equipment with us, like so many rockets and stuff, I guess this is the point where weight does get important and how much you can carry. Yeah. Because I, I imagine we can carry like 100 rockets with us and just blast everything to smithereens. Yeah, uh, you can also requisite vehicles too. So I'd imagine, uh, depending on what you guys are carrying, you might need a vehicle, but it's a dense jungle, so we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know quite everyone's load up by verbatim. So. Well, I remember we were starting to pull stuff together because we were wanting like uh, Melta mines and stuff. Our Melta yeah, charges. Sure. Currently, we have 72 free requisition to spare. Okay. Pulled. Let me go see how much a vehicle is, because you might well, need a vehicle to place some left. This missile, up though, is as much as it is. I may not have as much missiles as I thought I did. So I need some of mine back to buy missiles. Let me see. Yeah, let me see then. Weapon. Normous. Why is it not giving me the requisition points for this thing? No. Yeah, I guess that is requisition for each missile. Cool. <laughs> not cool. So I don't have 16. Excellent. I have two. 
let's see, there are five requisitions per rocket. Uh, yes. But I feel crack missiles are probably fairly important. Yes, we should get at least like at least eight, I guess, or like at least ten or something. The, that wow. it seems important because like we don't know how much infrastructure we need to destroy, and we don't know how much heavily armored uh, troops the orcs have there. Even though they are mostly primitive, they still can have something. Like these ones, these are snake bites, they're mostly primitive. Okay, well, I have two clips of Kraken rounds and one of Toxin rounds for the Bolter for free. 10 points in a missile launcher. So, five, ten. So, I can have three Krakens and I won't actually have any, any extra contributing to, uh, To the pool. I just see. <clears throat> so it's 40, 40 requisite for a rhino transport if you guys wanted one. Mm -hmm. I had to look it up. I mean, as nice as a rhino is, it is a death jungle. I would think we might want like an aerial transport instead because if we take something on the ground in a dense jungle, it's liable to get bogged down all the time. But then we're, whenever, where are we going to land if it's dense jungle? It is, yeah, it is. And uh, you do have a transport, but. Um... It specifies here specifically that uh, the canopy provides dense cover for everything beneath it. So if there's something important, we wouldn't be able to see it. Right. Sorry, uh, yeah, the, the the um Thunderbolt Thunderbolt uh transport you guys have access to, but it's currently gonna stay at the L Z. Did we have twenty five requisition or did you give us thirty requisition? Thirty. I gave you guys this. thirty. It was thirty? Okay, cool. Yeah. That's one more missile. I can have two missiles on me. Look, I have two missiles on me at the moment. And you I also can... have... You go, sorry. Four crack missiles for my missile launcher. There's another one, another... All oh, right, and I was going to take demolitions. That way, one of us could at least have demolitions. Oh, you're right. <clears throat> and then uh, you'll see mission number two war barge support that's what you guys have access to so if you guys just wanted the guardsmen to come with you to carry your extra stuff that's also another option do you have access to I think three squads mm. yes three squads of 10 12 guardsmen yep I see. So you can literally bring all those guys with you if you wanted to. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Alright, so I think we don't need a, uh, a Rhino transport in there uh, because it would be a dense jungle. Uh, we can pull for extra missiles and we can get one extra uh, plant missile for an extra tough batty or whatever. Let's see, there's a predator. Yeah, I'm looking up other vehicles that could possibly be useful to you. Yep. I mean, I definitely agree we need some plant missiles. I'm getting cracked for, like, armor. Like a dreadnought or. No, I'm sorry. Death knots? Death knots? Dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts. They are dreadnoughts. Um, or a killer cans or other stuff. Mm hmm. Uh. So how many plant missiles do we have? Currently zero. Okay, cool. So with 72 requisition, we can get one more, I guess. Oh. Well, the points that I had put in for that 
72. I paid for just cracking missiles. Yeah, same. I only I also paid for two crack extra two extra cracking missiles. Also, whirl whirlwind APC. If you guys wanted that. Again, that's APC in a jungle world. Well, I mean, if it has the range, you could probably hit a target with it. <laughs> I'm looking at the maximum range for this thing. Let's see. Never mind, it's only 300 meters. It wouldn't lead the. Yeah, it would be very useless. Are there any, like, flying transport ships? You have one. You have a Thunderbolt uh, gunship at your disposal. For your okay. Charge. But it also but have land speeders, which are like a hovercraft, but like land hovercraft, but it's not really useful in the jungle. Yeah. You're going to be taking a lot of pilot checks and uh, you're going to be uh, stormtroopering into walls. Also, assault bikes, maybe. It'd be like the Battle of Endor in Star Wars or whatever that planet was. Yeah, yeah. The guys on the land speeders just smacking into trees. And they're, the land speeders are made out of nitroglycerin, so when they crash, it explodes into a big fireball. Ours will too. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Last requisition is uh, each bike. Don't then again, can I, can, is, a, is a rhino strong enough to let's well tram trample down now, trees? It depends on the the jungle. Like, I mean, we probably could, but it just depends on, like, how thick it is. I mean, it's... The description it says here is dense vegetation and treacherous terrain. And that can be, like, plenty of, you know, cliffs and valleys and gullies and such. Uh, it says uh, it's 35 so for, a marine, for a single marine bike. Oh, for a single bike, that's... Oh, that's shit. Not, oh. Yeah, but I, I just have a feeling there's... The terrain's gonna be too much for uh, for a rhino or any kind of vehicle that doesn't fly. Well, I say we just take the Thunderbird transport or whatever it's called, and then use that to get around. And if we see an objective, then we can then we can it's, land uh... and take care of it. Yeah, question. Like we don't really know how far apart the objectives are from each other. Yeah, correct. That, that's that's correct. But uh, the the commander is going to have you guys link up with the vanguard forces down on the ground near the edge of uh, where the orcs are to get intel. So you guys can do that or fly around if you want to. <laughs> just sort of like flying circles. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. Point. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, whatever you guys want to do, like uh, do whatever your space marine. They tell you go down there, kill orc. That's your only mission, so you can meet, link up with the Vanguard forces. They're not instructing you to do that. They're just telling you they would have intel on the uh, the objectives ahead more than likely. Or good whereabouts of, of the terrain below. Because you yes. guys have no, no intel other than what uh, the what you've been given. Uh, like, the reason, I think... Uh, so, it's a jungle world, so there's going to be probably some poisonous or venomous creatures down there. Uh, the orcs are mo most likely are going to have some traps in there as well for the the humies and all that. And uh, But it would be really hard to get in uh, to travel in a vehicle. It would be much easier to travel on foot. And we could also, I guess, conceal ourselves in the vegetation, if need be. Uh, my, I'd wager we just get one... Well, we, we can get two planned missiles, because we can mess with one. Uh, uh, so that we can have two planned missiles, and then the rest can be spent on whatever. Um, that also just... would deforest an area, wouldn't it? A deep planter, right, missile? Yep. Yep, that'd be good to clear an LZ for sure. Also true, since, yeah, it, yeah. This was true. And what's the blast rate on that missile? I think it's like five. I don't remember. Let me check.
Oh, hey, Moth is back. Did you fix your shit? That's a negative. Moth did yeah. not, in fact, fix his shit. <laughs> I think, I think the Moth's microphone is just too lazy for the day. Yeah. Right. Just talk in chat there uh, in the, um, the game chat as your character, Moth. So the plan to create. Hold on. The plant missiles have a blast of three. Uh, blast of five. Sorry, blast of five. Okay, so they're not very good at clearing a large swaths of of terrain. All right, good to know. Yeah, ten meter circumference is still pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd give you like a little clearing for your guys is whatever. Seems to be very uh, single target focused weapon with a slight blast radius to it, but it would definitely kill for sure. Kill, kill good. <laughs> All right, uh, Tesseract, you want to do the honors of reading that dialogue that I posted last week? It's yes, absolutely. All, All right, here we go. Week. Captain Malchius turns to the kill team and speaks with a tone of utmost seriousness. You've heard the Inquisitor, and you know the gravity of the situation. Our mission is to find and neutralize Grucka Gorefist before he can cause any more damage to the planet and its inhabitants. You will be dropped off in a designated location and proceed to move in and locate the Orc Stronghold. He continues... The war barge will remain in orbit, but we'll be monitoring your progress and ready to provide any support needed. You'll have access to the war barge's heavy weaponry and vehicles, and we'll be able to transport you out if necessary. Malachius hands each member of the kill team a data slate containing the objectives given by the Inquisitor, along with maps and relevant data on the local area. Study this carefully and stay sharp. We're counting on you to get this done. Captain Malakius concludes his briefing and gestures towards the back of the room. Your Thunderhawk awaits you. You'll be inserted near the outskirts of the Orc's main stronghold. We've identified several potential landing zones, but the final decision will be made by your mission commander on the ground. He paused and looked at each member of the kill team. I won't lie to you, brothers. This mission won't be easy. The Orcs are fierce and cunning foe. But you are the finest warriors in the galaxy. I have no doubt that you will be successful in your mission. He nodded towards the door. Good luck, Kill Team, and remember, the Emperor protects. The Kill Team made their way towards the Thunderhawk, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them on the surface. Alright. Alright, well, before we jump, who's going to be our uh, squad leader this time? That's up to you. Uh, I can I do it if you do are we gonna take? You what? And what oath are we gonna take? Oh, that's right. Let's see what oaths we have. Oh. Well, we're making a decision. I need to take a dump. I'll be back. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> okay. Just, uh, Just keep... a serious information battle, brother. <laughs> Bring your headset in there and uh, turn on your mic. <laughs> Full blast. I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear the bombs dropping. <laughs> oh, you guys cracked me up. Oh, that's it. Okay. If you guys ever have Mountain Dew Major Melon. No. It's no. delicious. We can get uh, Oath of Knowledge, which would give us a plus 10 on our hit, hit rolls against the orcs. What pages are all these on? Uh, 229 of, a, of the PDF. Uh, of, the, of the book, should I say.
No, the PDF. Two twenty nine. Of the book. PDF is a two thirty, I think. Yeah. Two twenty nine. We take oath of knowledge, it'll give us the squad modes of go to ground, dig in, and strong points. Which I have no idea what those do. Let's see. Go to ground. When subjected to heavy, accurate, or effective fire, a well-trained squad knows how to take cover. As a reaction, a battle brother may issue a go to ground order when he or another member of the kill team within support range has been hit by a ranged attack. Both the battle brother and those in support range of him may immediately make a free move up to their agility bonus in meters to find cover. Um, <clears throat> the effects of the hit are worked out before any battle brothers may move. Uh, in the case of hits from semi air full auto weapons, only the first hit is worked out before Battle Brother moves the remaining hits after they have gone to ground. That's okay. what the ground is. Uh, what is it, the other one? Dig in? Yeah. Uh, against person weapons like plasma cannons and melted guns, even Space Marines will use cover for their advantage. Battle Brother may order his squad to dig in, seeking out the most defensible firing positions. While this ability is in effect, the Battle Brother and those in support range of him can double the armor points provided by any cover uh, they are currently using. This bonus to cover only applies to each individual Battle Brother as long as they remain stationary. I see. And also it was a uh, strong point. The third one. Strong point. Sometimes a Space Marine squad needs to hold a position at all costs, setting up fields of overlapping fire and holding the enemy back with a hell of bolt shells. A battle brother can establish a strong point, nominating either himself or a member of his kill team within support range as the center of the strong point. The center must remain stationary for the ability to remain in effect. The center may then call targets either as a free action in his, her, his turn or as a reaction. Battle brothers in support range of the center uh, then gain plus 20 ballistic skill and weapon skill tests against the called target. Holy shit. Uh, and they may reroll damage against it and may use their reactions to make a standard attack against it. Uh, a target remains marked in this way until either the center moves, ending the strong point, or the center marks a new target. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, that's that's but, pretty good. I don't know how often yeah. we're going to be uh, needing a set of strong point, but that's a pretty good ability. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Uh, but Strong Point is also in Oath to the Emperor, which also has Fire for Effect and Regroup. And I think that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Oath of the Emperor also, yeah, it has Fire Effect and Regroup. Which fire for effect sounds like a good one. I think that's an offensive one. Here we go. Fire for effect. Working as a single weld machine, the kill team can snap off shops at targets as they appear. While this power is in effect, the kill team may use their reactions to make a standard attack with a ranged weapon. Not broken at all. <laughs> Well, you only get one reaction a turn, so you can't dodge or parry. Uh, and a oh, yeah, standard well, attack is just one bullet. 
Yeah, I was just thinking that since like I have a talent which gives me like an extra parry, it's like a, essentially a reaction, but it's almost only against parries. Yeah, I'm back. Like Hello, back. Uh, what was the other I mean, one that it gives. What was the third one that that one gives? After the emperor, uh, Dude, do, you, do you feel like a great load has been lifted? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you uh, more than for the that. information. <laughs> I regroup. The kill team stands united and is always stronger, supporting each other against their foes. As a full action, the battle brother may order a regroup to allow himself and those in support range to, of him to move up to twice their agility bonus in any direction, just as if they made a full move action. In addition, uh, regroup move does not trigger enemy overwatch or suppression fire. I see. Well, counterpoint: if we take the, uh, if we keep taking the oath to glory, we will rank up fairly quickly and get access to better stuff. Yeah, we'll get a lot of renown from it for sure. <clears throat> uh, and it gives Bolter Assault and Furious Charge in addition to the Squad Advance, which yeah. we didn't really use last one, but maybe we'll remember the new stuff this time. Um, let's see here. Oh, those are after tax codes. All right, so Bolter Assaults. <clears throat> Space Marines are shock troops and excel at close, closing rapidly with the enemy annihilating them with a storm of Bolter Fire. When a Battle Brother calls for a Bolter Assault, both he and those in support range may make an immediate charge move and a standard attack with a Bolter, Bolt Pistol, or Storm Bolter. Uh, alternately, uh, they may use their standard attack to throw a grenade. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, that basically I, means one person as a free action calls for a bolter assault, and then everyone immediately just gets a full charge action plus a standard attack from a bolter weapon. Yes, uh, we can. Uh, every uh, as per standard issue, everyone has three frag grenades and three frag, frag grenades as well. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. Unless Thomas wants to give us ten of each again. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to, you guys can get the shit at the bandolier grenades you wanted. Uh, and furious charge. Often the only way to break a foe is to charge into their midst and hack them down. Using this ability, the battle brother and those in support range of him may make an immediate charge move and a standard attack with a melee weapon. In addition, such as uh, the fury of the attack, that all battle brothers involved may reroll the damage for their attack. And again, it's a free action and everybody gets to do it. Right. Like immediately. And then, of course, the remainder of the turns. Yep. So mm -hmm. the person who calls it gets the free charge and then a standard attack, and then he has the rest of their turn. Yes. And then everyone else gets the rest of their turns. Same thing for yes. Bolter Assault. How often can we call this? So we have a cohesion number, and each of those costs three points from our cohesion. Okay. Um, both her assault and furious charge is three points. Squad advance, which what, uh, was what we were using the entire time last time, only costs one. Uh, but that one's always on. These other two are once you use them, they're used, and you can't. You gotta spend the points to use them again. Um, right. How do you gain uh, cohesion points again? So um, you start. Well, if whoever the squad leader is, like his willpower bonus, I think, or fellowship bonus, uh, there's some other attributes that add to it. Uh, I gotta find it again. Right. Uh, also, uh, capturing objectives, so it'd be up to the GM as well, discretion, if you get cohesion, based on your guys' role-playing role, role playing performance type of thing. Like, hey, you guys did really well. I give you X amount of cohesion points i see right so that's one way to get it and then also he's talking about those certain uh skill tests he can do to, to gain one gotcha 
So if you have the command skill, you get an additional cohesion point. If you have command skill plus 10, it's two. Command skill <clears throat> plus 20 is plus three. Generate right the start of each mission, depending on which player takes the role of the squad leader. This reflects the leader's command abilities and natural charisma, as well as the Battle Brothers' faith in him. To work out the size of the kill team's full cohesion, uh, use the squad leader's fellowship bonus as a base. <clears throat> this score can then uh, be modified by, if we're at rank 4 or higher, we get bonuses, but it's basically the command points is the additional bonus. Um, also, there are ways of regaining cohesion. <clears throat> um... If the kill team completes one of their mission objectives, we get a uh, cohesion point. If any member of the kill team spends a fate point, we get cohesion. And the GM decides if uh, we can put, uh, did a specific awesome sauce task to gain cohesion. Uh, plus, uh, my solo ability, which is weird, adds cohesion. Right. For being an ultramarine. Hmm. hmm. I think it's like an additional three. Um, yeah, yeah, favorite son. Uh, when in solo mode, an ultra marine may re-roll any fellowship test when dealing with either space marines or members of the Imperial Armed Forces. Oh, cool. I need to remember that. In addition, their strength of leadership means that the battle brother adds plus one to their kill team's cohesion if he is the squad leader. Uh, this bonus cohesion remains active even when a battle brother is not in solo mode. So, if I'm the squad, if I'm the squad leader, I just give an additional plus one. Basically, it's most Am beneficial I, for you to be our squad leader every time. If we want a lot of uh, squad mode or uh, cohesion points, yeah. Um, and then I know the ultramarine squad mode rally cry. For the, for the ultramarine squad ability is in battle, blah, blah, blah. Battle Brother uses this ability. It instantly restores a number of cohesion equal to their fellowship bonus. So as a squad ability, I can just be like, everybody, feel great about ultramarines. Okay. Except I'm not, I'm an Iron Snake, so it'll be, feel great about the Emperor. <laughs> uh and everyone's like, yeah, the Emperor and our cohesion's regained by my fellowship bonus. True. Ah. So we could start out with like 10 cohesion. Uh, which, in order to join squad mode, you have to uh, make a cohesion bon uh, check, which you can either spend an entire full action to join squad mode uh, instead of being in solo mode. Uh, or you can do a cohesion test, which is just you roll a d10, and if it's under our cohesion number, you instantly join, and you have the rest of your turn. Otherwise, you have to spend your full turn uh, joining squad mode. Mm -hmm. So if our cohesion is already at 10, you can never fail. Oh, there you go. Right. I think that's what you did last mission. That's why I didn't even take it into account. You guys are just did it. <laughs> Yeah, basically. That and my armor last time also gave me a cohesion bonus. But I have a different armor now. I don't know if it has the same history or not. But when you generated it, it gave it a different history. Um, uh, I would give it the same history as your last one, because all he did is craft on the, your your base Yeah, armor. it's basically an upgrade to our armor. It's not a yeah, new yeah, armor. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So then I'll lose this uh, plus 15 fellowship when dealing with Space Marines and add that plus that's, 15 cohesion back. That's correct. Yeah. Cool. I don't think and what's great is, is I randomly rolled that, too, for that history. Nice. Not bad. And I randomly rolled for the new craft you had on there, so it all works out. Alright, so are we making me the squad leader again then? 
Uh, uh if you want, sure. yeah. Okay. Uh, so my fellowship bonus is five. Uh, and my command is plus ten, so that's another two. So seven. Plus one for being an ultramarine, so eight. My armor for nine. So we start with nine cohesion. So we have to like, we have to nine. roll still, right? Yes. All right. Because uh, I don't want to waste my squad mode ability at the moment. What is it? Roll one d ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. To join. Well, if you want to quickly, like immediately, join squad mode, you just roll one d ten. Uh, and if it's equal or under the cohesion, you just join, and you have the rest of your turn. Otherwise, you have to spend a full action to join. But we can also just start the game in squad mode. <laughs> Gazunte. Because it's just a full... Gazunte. It's just a full action to join squad mode, so you don't get to roll it to immediately right. join. Got it. Because we can just start it in squad mode. Yep, as long as you're not too far from each other, I ain't gonna be too anal about distances. Although, I will probably, like, immediately also spend, um, one point for squad advance so we can get that free movement. Sure. As a reaction, get that free full move. Uh, so we're gonna be at eight. Oh, you're using your reaction for that movement. You're spending yes. your reaction. Yeah, yeah, you are using your reaction to get that free move. Got it. <clears throat> so we know Moth's microphone is dead, but Moth, can you type in chat? Yo. Nice. All right. Yeah, uh... Yeah, talk as your character when you're in character, by the way. Windows doesn't even see the mic. Damn. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, let me know if you need a new mic, man. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely help you out when I get paid. You can just work it off. I got some projects I need to get done. Is it a driver issue? Like maybe installing a driver for it? Probably just a new, new headset. Hey, uh, I, I would be willing to throw in for that too. So, Boko doesn't just have to be you. Oh no, I'd be a fair trade. You know, I just get work out of them. This is why I do. That way, it's not charity. Oh. <laughs> that way, it's, it's, a, it's a fair. I mean, that's fair, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have I have a couple models of headset that I would recommend. I mean, yeah, nothing too fantastic. Like, don't don't five hundred dollar headset. Yeah, let's go with that one. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. All right. So before we head out, I just want to make sure we've spent all of our requisition because I don't think we have. We have right. Not. So so yeah, I put in Death Watch that you can get those the ten grenades of each again if you wanted to, but it costs ten rec for each belt. Mm -hmm. Just so that's that's per belt per player. So. So I think what we need to do is. So everyone type in chat how much you're contributing to that pool to spend on stuff that you haven't already bought things already with. Alrighty. Let's see if you guys want to do that. Uh, yeah, you can right. also get a vehicle, so, but you said it's useless, so. Which it is. <laughs> it's the jungle. Yeah. Unless you had, like, the giant tank thing trawler from, uh, what was it, that movie? Um, I can't remember. Avatar. Goldie? Avatar. Yeah, Fern Goldie. Yeah, Fern Goldie. Yeah, you're right. It's just, it's Fern Goldie, um, Pocahontas. In well, space. Moff says he has two melt bombs, but he's asking if anyone has demolition skills. Yes, I, I did take the demolition skill, so I am trained in demolitions. All right. Sweet. All right. So, uh, 
good. Nice. That's 20, 40, 50, 63, uh, 69 points. Nice. Giggity. Uh, so we got 69 points free to buy more munitions, or if you feel you want something yourself. Um, now, did anyone buy any of the, uh, the anti-plant missiles? No. No. Okay. How much a piece are the anti-plant missiles? 25. They're 25 a piece? Jesus. Okay, well, we can get two. <laughs> they are 5 to 10, though. Yeah, it is... They're worth getting, I th I feel, but Jesus. <laughs> and like they they penetrate toughness and armor straight on, so that's nice. So we found moth that uh, in the in the listing that it gave a weight value, which would indicate that each missile is in fact listed with one missile for that requisition value. So, like, I no longer have 16 crack missiles. I now have four. Damn. Yeah. Uh, and I have an extra two. Yep. So we have a total of six crack missiles, which are good. Uh, I definitely feel that, of the 69, getting at least two uh, anti-plant missiles would probably be pretty great. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Right. Which leaves us with 19 spare points that we can play around with. Uh, if it were only one more, we could get a motion detector. <laughs> Is the GM uh, going to allow us to fudge one wreck point? Nope. Uh, I, 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 I can, <laughs> um, Math I can, doesn't uh, lie, so... Take away one okay. missile. Oh, but I, could, I could just uh, give one more wreck to you guys. How so? Oh, I'm I'm using uh my wrecks for frags and crack. Oh. Well, grenades or missiles. Grenades. Oh. So okay. I can literally just give one back to you guys. Yeah, I think I, it would be if, if you don't mind, yeah, because I I think in a jungle setting, having a motion detector would be pretty nice. Oh, well, right. counterpoint, everything is moving in the jungle. <laughs> So. Yeah, well, it would detect breeze. like moving leaves and swaying branches. It would detect like, huh. you know, an actual body moving behind a tree somewhere. All right, okay. I'm, I'm giving one more requisition points to the group. Sweet. Uh, so we'll get uh, that in one uh, one motion detector. Sweet. All right. Who wants to carry the motion detector? I vote somebody with tech skill. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Sweet. Then you can take the motion predictor. Uh, That's just what it's called, motion predictor. Oh, actually, yeah. hold on. Let me let me read What's... it before we actually fully get it, because I think it may be something different. Um, a complex target tracking cogitator, and this device activates once the user has decided his desired target. Uh, the predictor then tracks the target. And when, oh, it's not even that. Oh, oh God, it's a weapon God. attachment. Yeah, it is. Ugh. Like That's why I'm to... using that, actually. Like Where is... Thing. Where's just shit? War gear. That's where it is. Okay, war gear. Because I know there's a motion detector somewhere. Yep. There has to be. Yeah, yeah. Aaron used one on the Death Watch. Or not Death Watch. The uh, Dark Heresy campaign. The Ospex Scanner. That's what it is. Oh, it's only 12. What's it called? Ospex Scanner. Can you spell that? A U S P E X. I never would have guessed that shit. Okay, got it. Um, uh, these devices are used to detect energy emissions, motion, and biological life signs. Character using the Auspex gains a plus twenty bonus to awareness tests when they make a tech use test to spot things not normally detectable to human senses alone, such as invisible gases nearby bioscience or ambient radiation. Uh, the standard range is 50 meters. Uh, the walls more than 50 centimeters thick uh, can block the scanner. So that's what, plus 20 to awareness mm. when that's making... really, really nice. <laughs> yeah. Make Basically, you're making a tech use instead of a, a basic awareness test and adding 20. 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, Pass, Jesus. what's your intelligence right now? For 47. I have 44 plus 20. And I'm trained in tech, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you have yes, more. You All right, I also, have, I also have 47 plus 20, and so I'm six or seven. You, okay, also so maxed then you'll carry it. Then you'll be the one carrying it. Yeah. Aren't you the heavy Pretty much. Guy anyways? Yeah. Something. So. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, is that um, my bolter. I have to do a tech roll to make sure my bolter doesn't get overheated and d dies. Yep. Damn. It does yep. a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so we have seven uh, left. Uh, wh whoever gave up that one in requisition for, uh, for a grenade can take that one wreck back. Because... Right. It was I, I am taking it back. Sweet. You can, uh, so we have seven you know, points we can still use. Yeah, you can uh, get ooh, squad this... for five if you wanted. Say again? You can get another squad of marines for five if you wanted it. A squad of marines? What? Uh, guardsmen, guardsmen, sorry. Oh, guardsmen. okay. I was like, ooh. we can just requisition a squad of death mar <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. marines for five requisition? Well, good on this planet Not... with an army. Mm -hmm. Uh... Then we would just use breath. all of our requisition on that. Get an entire <laughs> chapter of Marines. Jesus. <laughs> no, you got your... Uh, maybe. That could be in the cards in the future. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I leave nothing... I leave not. I never... I never say never when it comes to these style of games. Because it could be all, right. all within the cards. So here's something that may also be useful because we're going into a thick jungle world. The car... car graph. Cartograph. Um, specialized data slate accepts geographical and navigational information on a planet, either in form of existing databanks or gathered by a ship's auger arrays in orbit. Its geolocator tracks the user's planetary coordinates, enabling it to provide distance and bearing to any known locations. This provides plus 10 to all navigation surface tests. This seems crucial. It also uh, is capable of storing details, maps, and schematics, which can be useful for objective approaching and planning. Uh, many cartographs are also equipped with a small hollow projector that displays three-dimensional maps of its contents. It's only five points. Seems so like kind I of a steal. I agree. Sounds good. Sure, why not? Sweet. Who wants this one? What's the relevant skill? Tech use? Uh, navigation surface. Okay. And Who's navigation. the best navigation? Uh, which is intelligence based. Yeah, tech marine, use it. Alright. Yeah, it's not a tech skill, it's just nav surface. Got it. Which everyone is trained in, but it is intelligence based. It sounds like uh, Tesseract being the support character in this one. Well, he is a tech marine. Yeah, that is kind yeah. of what I was going for when I made my yeah. character. <laughs> what is this thing called again? We are indeed. Uh, it is a cartograph. Cartograph, okay. Yep. Yeah, but the big thing there, Moth, though, is that it's... Uh, uh, key stat is intelligence, and uh, giving it to the two people who have maxed out their intelligence is pretty nice. Oh, you also maxed your intelligence. Did three of our people max their intelligence? We have very <laughs> intelligent space marines. Okay, then. We might, we might need to get... diversify, not consolidate like this. <laughs> I guess we're all thousand sons now. Uh, yeah, true, true, true. Uh, medicine is an intelligence space skill, yep. Uh, they will... Hmm, that's, that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. Then why didn't either of you guys take demolitions? It's also an intelligence-based skill. Let me take something yeah. else. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, what, what the why, fuck? Why is the, <laughs> the tactical marine having the demolitions? <laughs> it should be one of you.
Yeah, Moth can fail, basically. Unless it's like a critical fail, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, so Demolition is a generic skill that all Space Marines can take at rank 2. It's only 400 points. So anyone that has 400 points can just take Demolitions. I'm actually trained in Demolition. Oh, well, shit. I'll untrain myself then, because... <laughs> <laughs> Actively forget. When does this happen? When did I tr get trained in demolition? You may have already had it for being a tech marine, maybe. Uh, I mean, you also tried yeah, to use possibly. demolitions when we first landed, so you had it. Sweet. Like when we yeah. landed the first mission, you tried to and use I it. I will remember. free that slot up. I thought that was someone else. else. I thought that was you, damn, Mister. I'm gonna rig these no, crack grenades to explode. That, that was after. Okay. Yeah, I'm trained in demolition. Uh, okay, good. so I guess I'm getting the melt of bombs. Yes, you'll be taking the melt of the melt of bombs. Wait, who has a melt right. bomb? Moth has two well, melt of bombs. Anyone can carry them, but you're the one going to be using them. Yeah, so yeah. I'll carry them. So how do the melt of bombs work? Like, are they uh, count as a ranged weapon? They're uh, place explosives. No, no, you use the demolition skill to plant them. Got it. Okay. Uh, we got two points left. Uh, who wants two points? <laughs> who, who wants to rack up on grenades or, or something or some ammo if they want, if they can... I mean, it. it would be probably more useful for either one of you to have more ammo or something. Uh, unfortunately, two points is enough for ammo... Can I get hopper mines with those? Don't think so. But for two points, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Sturdy's combat knife is two points. They are five points. Hopper mines are five points. Hmm. Uh, a crack grenade is one point, and a frag grenade is one point. So that and an Astartes combat knife are the only things we can buy with these two points. Unless there is something else in another book that's also worth one or two points. No, nothing. Cool. Who, want, who wants a couple of grenades? I'll take a couple grenades. Why not? Fuck it. Sweet. Then mark yourself down a couple of grenades. That is all of our wrecks spent. Excellent. Take two frag grenades. Oh yeah, uh, Boca. I wanted to ask since my jump pack is uses uses like a special fuel. Uh, does it mean I can requisition more fuel, or is it only yep. like, okay, no, how can. much would it would it be to requisition the fuel for my jump pack? Uh, I guess one per charge, would be fine. One requisition per one charge. Mm -hmm. Can I have those two points back? <laughs> That's kind of well, useful. Let me, here, but yeah, let me look at the book to make sure that's that's accurate, because it could be more or less. But actually, not I have not useful. seen any jump back fuel. Okay, so that's why I'm leaving it the GM discretion then. So I'll keep it at one per, one rec per, per one. Yeah, uh, and it's like uh, it says like any action. Well, uh, what does it say exactly? Uh, each use of the jump pack consumes one unit of fuel. So even if I use it to dash, it still uses one unit of fuel. Is that correct? Say that again? If I use a jump pack to dash, which uh, it says uh, in the description, each use of the jump pack consumes one unit of fuel. Yep. So, okay. Correct. Yep. Sure. That, that would be that would be single use, yes. All right. Uh, can I have those two points then, Mr. Uh, Tesseract? Yeah, that's fine. You can have that. Thanks. Bloop. Sweet. I okay. think we're ready to go. I think we are. One second. Who's going to be carrying the plant missiles, by the way? 
You have those Marines. You can have them carry them. You have three. Again, squads. what Marines? Your Guardsmen. Guardsmen. All right. Whatever. Semantics. You have. I mean, if they die, they will have our plant missiles with them. So it's better that we have them instead. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I got the missile launcher, so I can probably just carry them. I got your missile right. launcher right here. It's there, like one one kilo each. They're not they're not heavy. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm not carrying that much more. Just a missile launcher and like the four crack, and the, I guess now the two plant missiles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh. And uh. Our wonderful tech marine has the two melta bombs, along yep. with the cartographer and the aspect scanner. And yep. I have two extra missiles. Excellent. King is pawned. He's dead. BBX. He's dead. Bubbles. He's dead. Uh, Bubbles. Who was that? The orc. The bubbles. No. <laughs> bubbles. Burning bubbles. One of the was burning bubbles. So, you guys are in the hangar of the vessel. The <clears throat> let me get that commander out too, because he just had a speech to do. Oh man, I hate how ginormous it puts him. That's no ordinary commander. Well, he's over there. He's taking the Primus. Uh, surgery. He's become a Primus Marine. He's crossed to Rubik. Well, says, by the way, I've got about 50 doses of detox. I'm going to pass out five to everyone. Sweet. Five to everyone. Okay, cool. So that no, makes okay, my so. total 15 because I had 10 of those. So it's like, yeah, is, is it? Isn't that 10 each? 10 yeah, requisition each? He made them. He made oh. them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or these are the five additional from the ones he made before, but I thought he gave like ten everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, five. <clears throat> Got it. If you need any else, do okay, not hesitate cool. to so ask. Five or Sweet. Oh, thank damn it, that's for anything else. Anything else. Uh, <laughs> Kurt. I'm sorry, I appear to be suffering from a stroke. I require that uh, watch commander. Right. <laughs> Give me your Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need a timepiece. It time costs too though. much requisition. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. We appreciate it. Um. <laughs> Chrono is one requisition. Yeah, right. Give me your boots, your clothes, and your motorcycle. <laughs> I see. Uh, I believe that's it. I think we're ready, yeah? Uh, yeah. Alright. All right. Still walk away. I, I nod in irritation. Um, Alright. <laughs> I stare you down. I yeah, the... Stare back. Thunderhawk's over this way. You guys doing anything along the way to the Thunderhawk? Uh, looking around, watching, making sure that we're okay. Uh, no, we're just praising the Emperor. Okay, yeah. uh, do you... Yeah, I'm doing awareness check? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I do an Not awareness it. check with my, uh, scanner? No. <laughs> okay, alright. Fuck. Okay, you don't notice it then. Alright. Hold on, Karen, hold on. on. Hold on. Uh oh. I feel watching a saboteur sabotage or Thunderhawk is important. I'm gonna spin a fate point. 
<laughs> right, <re> right. It. <laughs> right, right, we had this. Okay. Fight. I forgot. Uh, I forgot. There Holy we go. Shit. <laughs> I witnessed the fuck out of that saboteur. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you just hear a faint murmur in the distance. From where? All around, I guess. You don't know. You're not quite sure. Very faint. <laughs> this place has very poor acoustics. You can't really discern. But what did you expect, brother? An amphitheater? <laughs> yes. But it caught it, <laughs> it caught your attention because it was kind of out of place. Brothers, like something was whispering we... to you. Oh, whispering to me specifically. Well, I mean, you don't know if they heard it, but. You can, you can inquire if they had. Cool. Uh, brothers, I suggest we take a moment and check around the Thunderhawk for a final preparation check before we depart. We Why? don't want a mishap like last time. Why is that? Did you hear something? Perhaps I did. Ah, um, well, perhaps I can check the scanner. <laughs> Good idea. Make sure it works before we get down to the planet. Excellent oh, yeah. idea, Tech Marine. Excellent. Yes, idea. I'll go ahead right now. It might also be a uh, good idea to follow all the start uh, flight checks. Ho, 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 ho. Check out that degree of success. <laughs> and, uh, well, the scanning. scanner's working incredibly. In yeah, fact, yeah, yeah, you, you're detecting the pilots there, the the, the crew that's uh, <laughs> around you, the space planes, <laughs> the thousands and thousands of guys gearing up for battle. There are thousands and thousands of guys gearing up for battle. <laughs> there are thousands of saboteurs. We might we might want to run a fly check with the pilot <laughs> to make sure the ship is in order. Okay, so you're gonna discuss with the pilot. Yeah. Okay. I will evaluate my gear. I succeed. Okay. Nice. So you're going to talk to the pilot then? Yeah. <laughs> pilot, have you run the flight check on this craft? Yeah, so the pilot uh, con uh, confirms all pre-flight checks have been completed on the Thunderhawk. We've checked the engines, the weapon systems, all critical components. Everything's ready to go. Excellent. Well, Battle Brothers Tech Marine Apothecary and the other guy that has te uh, his intelligence super maxed out. <clears throat> uh, if you don't mind giving the Thunderhawk one glance over before we leave. Yes, of course, brother. Okay. The pilot oh helps my god. <laughs> you <laughs> failed! I, I, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I assist. I assist. The, the pilot's also helping you, too. He's help. He's guiding you through as well. Uh, so, plus 20 with him helping. Okay, then he succeeded. <laughs> then he succeeded. Barely. Okay. So, <laughs> as, you're going, as you're going through, you see that what he says is true. Everything seems to be in good top tip shape. You see... No obvious signs of sabotage or damage done to the Thunderhawk. I see nothing wrong here, brothers. And you spend about 30 minutes doing all the pre-flight pre checks. Do you want to do any more? Uh, I, think uh, I think we're good. <laughs> I made a check with my gear. What do I see? Like the evaluate skill. But, uh, you see the same thing. Are you right, following um, the pilot around too as well? And evaluating what he's saying? Oh, so I, I, I evaluated my gear be prior to meeting the pilot, just okay. to see if it's uh, working or not, if it's like been tampered with. Nope, all good. All good. Okay. Uh, while they're checking the the Thunderhawk, I would like to give one more moment to try and find the source of that murmur. I'm not going to like spend a lot of effort trying to find it, but you know, if I can find it, I okay. will.
you're listening for it still and you don't you don't hear it Moff, anymore. Moff is going to get a medical eval on the pilots. While this is occurring? Presumably, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. you don't. You, yeah, you don't hear it anywhere around anymore. Hey, there's some Medicaid roll. Uh, what's that for? Uh, medical eval on the pilots, and I guess the all, crew of the all Thunder. All tip top Rock. shape. All tip top shape. And you're spending about thirty minutes on that one, checking all them. Well, well this would have been me. while he's checking the Thunderhawk. He's right. doing the eval. I am looking right. for the stuff. So we spent you know thirty minutes in free flight. All right, cool. All Everything right. checks out, brothers. Let's be on our way. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then you guys make it successfully down to plant side to the LZ. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Why my tiny baby again? I don't. It's just. It, I cannot. For, I cannot force it to make you bigger or smaller. It's just what the system does when I drag you in. So yeah, no problem. It, it's it's whatever. I've given up. Well, if we were any larger, we'd be bigger than this Thunderhawk. Yeah. It's all. It's all. Yeah. I mean, if you want with size proportion, you'd be like that, and then. I guess we could do that. Oh, that works. Brothers, worked. I've become a baby. <laughs> It appears that I'm slightly larger than the rest of you. Oh, never mind. How's that works? You just have to zoom in a little. Yeah. Yeah, I think it works. That was a full move. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> that's that's no move. That was another full move. That's no move. No. <laughs> Yeah, that looks about right, where the plane is about 45 meters. You guys get to the, uh, the forward, uh, you know, forward bunker base where the guardsmen is set up, the vanguard. Uh, you see, you see the bunker, you see various cargo supplies, weapons, uh, no vehicles. Uh, you see the dense jungle that lies ahead. You're on the outskirts of the jungle currently. Cool. Uh, we proceed up to the entrance. Does the cartograph uh, evaluate the, the terrain, or it only records what we've seen so far? Oh, uh, the yeah, the pilot verifies that you're the correct uh, LZ, and the cartographer verify you're the correct LZ. I think it, it's a GPS, essentially. Yeah, it should take data in from both uh, orbiting ships and planetary information, uh, yeah. along with what we discover along the way. Yeah, and uh, um, orbiting ship, um, they're in Voxcom with you. They tell you they're not able to get any comms from this from this bunker. Uh, they haven't heard from them in about a couple hours. Oh, cool. Bunkers up, brothers. Be ready for anything. Okay. All right. The Emperor demands vigilance. Right. Uh, as you proceed in, you see a bunker, uh, various computers, weapons, armory wears uh you see a officer or someone just saying the computer is just typing away at things at the desk you there give us a report about the happenings here he just looks up and he goes back to what he's doing <laughs> this is not a, and this is not a space marine. No, it's just a regular human. Is he in any kind of uniform? Yeah, you recognize him as a some sort of guardsman officer of some sort. I say, officer, I said, give me a report. Two degrees of a command check. <clears throat> he kind of briefly stops what he's doing. Plus, I have uh, authority, so those outside Space Marines should recognize my authority. He does. He recognizes it. He stops what he's doing. He turns around, stands up, and he gives you a, a brief rundown. Um, <clears throat> all our patrols haven't reported back yet. I'm the only one here. 
Uh, as far as I know, the Vanguard forces are just missing in action. And I've been waiting on for reinforcements. I was told there'd be some, you'd be here, and I've been trying to uh, get the network uh, reestablished with the mining facility to no avail. And that's all he knows. Cool. Tech Marine, can you assist him getting a connection established? I'll give it Obviously. my best shot, brother. Here, Thank allow you. me. Uh, I move in towards the terminal where the guardsman was working at. And okay. I'm going to try to see if I can help him out getting that connection back up and running. Uh, he gets in front of you. He goes, what are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm assisting you in getting this network connection back up and running. Do you, and he asks, do you have authorization to do that? I turn and look at uh, our... Do you have authorization to stand in our way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I turn... Who are I... you to question us? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I turn I turn and look at uh uh Yilmug's character and uh and I just turn back and look at uh the guy and point to Yilmug's character and I tell him that yeah, this guy has all the authority and he told me to do this, so I'm doing it. <laughs> and he looks at him, he looks at you, that that's like that's all and well, but you don't have the clearance to access these terminals. Unless you do. We're, we're Marines of the Death Watch question. chapter. What clearance do we need? Well, he stops you right there. He's like, that's all great and all, but there's this is, you know, highly, highly sensitive uh, information we have here. I can't just let even Space Marines access this terminal. I would like to roll for Intimidate. <laughs> Go for it. Any modifier? Uh, minus 10. I don't intimidate. He goes like, like why you are intimidating. I'm uh, just standing there menacing, which is staring yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah. He says, why are you intimidating? I still cannot allow you to access these terminals. He would, Under whose yeah. authority? And he breaks down uh, what his authority is. He's a very, pretty high-ranking individual in this world. So, unless you have someone higher up above you, and, and you know, we do. It's called an inquisitor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. But he, he points to you. He's like, "Are you the inquisitor?" No, but we're here on a mission to be hest of the inquisitor, and any information in the following areas is paramount to our success in our mission. And then he says. And he tells you, well, until he's on the line, I can't allow you to have access to this terminal. Well. Hmm. If I were playing any other Space Marine chapter, I think I would have shot him by now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very well, is. then. I would like to come, come up home. to our captain, or, you know, up to the ship... Um, Captain Mercius Mar Malicus, this is Squad Leader Ancius. We have an obstinate uh, guardsman <laughs> um, requesting proper designations from uh, the Inquisitor to give us proper intelligence about the place that we need and access to the systems that we need. Um, Please, if you would so kindly relay it unto him, or give me the order to relieve this man of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Malakius is typing. He's typing through verbal communications. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he sounds very similar to our tech marine. It's uncanny. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Perhaps we have the same gene seed. Maybe you are from the same chapter. But I didn't know gene seeds affected the vocal cords quite 
so much. <laughs> Mutations are a hell of a thing. That they are, brother. Drugs are a hell of a drug. <laughs> I nod. <laughs> <laughs> I nod in confusion. Those are some long access codes. Holy shit. <laughs> you want that? Captain Blankia <laughs> says, Do not kill that officer as for order of the Inquisitor, as I have been told from him personally about this very issue should it have arrived. Best I can tell you is to do what must be done but quietly and without bloodshed. So knock him out is what I'm hearing. It's not bloodshed, and it's quiet, so yeah, we can do that. <laughs> well, if we knock this guy out, it may cause internal bleeding. Does that count, or does it have to be external? I, I think any bleeding counts. Um, <laughs> shit. Very well then, officer. We will acquiesce to your request. However, our second marine can very well help you establish communication if there's any problem with your communications array. It you're gonna try to, uh, was it fellowship? Persuasion? Oh, yeah, charm. It's charm, I think, yeah. Okay, go for it. <laughs> we managed to charm this guy after a right, failed says, intimidation <laughs> roll. <laughs> well, he looks at you, he looks at the rest of the team, he's like, if you can get me off this death world, I'll, I'll definitely give you whatever you need. He kind of goes into detail, he's kind of sick of being at this post, and his uh, role in the Imperium as the more instrumental you are in your assistance to us will determine whether we can uh, requisition you off world right that is such a... as much of a promise as I can give yeah. but it will depend on your assistance because uh, he's a he's a highly valued individual but he was placed here hand-picked by the Inquisitor to be here, and he doesn't want to be here no more. Oh, man. Oh, well, if the Inquisitor hand-picked you, I can tell you now, the sooner we accomplish our goals here, the sooner you can get off this planet. Right. It's more like getting off this rock. Well, he's been here for quite some many years so far, dealing with these 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 orcs, and it's, <laughs> it's rather irritating. Anyways, uh, he agrees, and Allows access to the terminal. That took a lot longer than it needed to. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I go up to the terminal and, uh... Actually, I don't even go up to the terminal. You know why? Because I have a, mi I have a rare mind impulse unit that, uh... Has a one kilometer range. So I wirelessly network into the terminal and then... Does it have a mild, like mind... Uh, input thing, like a, uh, a port for the mind and both units. Of the terminal? Mm -hmm. Because, like, yeah. isn't it that, like, you can only link with those, the, that equipment which has the mind impulse? Okay, does it have a mind impulse unit? Terminal. I'll go ahead and evaluate, or whatever you want to do to. The yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do uh, tech use to figure that out. Modifier? Uh, plus 10? Plus 10? Damn. <laughs> Good uh, thing you got that aware, plus 10. Yeah, as far as you're aware, it's a very archaic system. It probably wouldn't interface well with what your uh, neural implant there. I roll my <laughs> eyes and uh, walk up to the terminal and do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> can't, the neural implants, can't the neural implant sense a pulse so that it can detect those kind of devices? You know, like Bluetooth. Right. Yeah, yeah but well, it's also a very archaic system. Yeah, it doesn't have it. So. Gotcha, but... I can see the serial port on this thing. Right, basically. <laughs> it has, a has like, a floppy drive or whatever. <laughs> 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 Our very old system. Floppy disk drive. I've... ...and still barely succeed at these tech uses. I haven't seen a floppy disk drive since I clicked on a save button. 
right. Our tech marine may be cursed. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna roll tech use to see if it's I can fix. I'm gonna see if so I can fix the system. So yeah. You can figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modifier. I'm sure he doesn't have any feuds with some greater demon princes. Uh, plus ten. I don't think he's respecting the machine spirits enough. Mm. Boom. So, <laughs> uh, after about 30 minutes of messing around with stuff, you're able to deduce that uh, the hard lines or communications between this bunker and the greater network at large has been severed. So more than likely, the, the comms, ar comms array relay has been uh, either destroyed or disabled. Um but it wouldn't be apparent to uh, a user, front end user like that, because it's such a high technical thing. So, as far as he was aware, uh, <laughs> he's having network issues. Uh, if you if you try plugging it back in, <laughs> right? Uh, no, but you're more uh, more than likely the 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 relay is a giant building, right? So that was either destroyed or disabled. It wouldn't be on this site. So I relay that information to the guardsman, and uh, he says that. Well, that's a, that's a, he, he kind of looks around like that'd be impossible. It's like, now that means the facility's lost. Impossible. Are you absolutely sure that means the facility's lost? Because it could be anything. It could even be a cabling issue. He says the squirrel could have gotten into the system and bit the wrong cable. <laughs> He says not. He says, he, he can, he says not likely. Um, he says highly unlikely unless they can dig down. You know, tens of thousands of meters. Where oh. is the facility, and what is it? He said. Jake said, "I can't tell you that." Anyways, he can't tell us that. that you have lost contact. Oh, he says he can tell you that it's a mining facility, and that's all you need to know. The need to know basis. Well, you guys I can assure general. you, I can assure you that we need to know, because we're hey. here for a specific purpose. What's your any what action? What's your purpose? Bring up the crypto, the cryptograph. Let's see if it's on our map. All right. The cartograph. The cartograph. So, it's plus ten to navigation. Where's navigation? Why can't I find the navigation? Navigation skill? is on the the rightmost side. Oh yeah, okay. Because it's one of those grouping ones. Okay, so it's gonna be surface navigation. Plus, Plus ten. Just ten. Create, create a new one as well, but yeah. Well, it should be auto-populated with surface because everyone's trained in it. All right, so uh, your map relays all, all the information on this world. It shows the various mining facilities. It doesn't show in this area or anywhere near here any uh, mining facility that he speaks of. Uh, it is you're able to deduce though that it's a restricted area. It's definitely a restricted <laughs> area. Three point. Is it here? <laughs> if it doesn't show up on the map, but but uh, you're not but able to get. If it's a giant restricted area, is it here? <laughs> it's chi yeah, giant square of restricted area. Yes. Um, does it say don't? Is it the area that says don't go here? Is that the mine? <laughs> yes, the giant cross. Yeah. You would deduce that, yeah. Brother, so I think we should go to the restricted area. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll find a mine there. Who knows? <laughs> Officer, where have your patrols gone missing? Uh, he tells you that they're trying to uh, get intel on on Gorfis, the, uh forces in his fortress. He has a fortress deep in the heartland somewhere, and they're pretty close to figuring it out. But uh, in between here and there, that's all, he, that's all he knows. They haven't reported back in like three days. Do you know what directions they headed out in? Yeah, he tells you. Yeah, I gave the order myself. So he tells you that they headed, uh, you know, south, you know, southwest or yeah, southwestern direction. And what direction is the uh, restricted area? It's to the east. Okay. 
be this way. So, we have a couple choices here, clearly. Uh, we can either start wandering around randomly. Always a good choice. Uh, we can go investigate the restricted area, because clearly an orc sabotage has occurred there. We may be able to get lucky and intercept the saboteurs and interrogate them. Maybe. Or we try and find the missing vanguard uh, to the southwest uh, in the hopes that they are still alive or have gathered some kind of useful intelligence. What, what do we even get from is? helping this officer? Our objective is to find the orc and not help this guy. Right. He's but, telling you uh, a saboteur unit may have some fancy orc tech. Oh, was yeah, just he, a I didn't hear that. Oh, uh, he was telling you that he was looking for uh, Gorka Gorfess as, Gorka Gorfess as well. And that's what his patrols were sent out to go look for the, those vanguards when they arrived. Right, but the uh, the orc saboteurs may have useful tech. Uh, yep. So that would be, you know, the, the going to the restricted zone to find the orc saboteurs. Uh, also, we know that uh, Gortuk or Gorfus uses sneaky, sneaky tactics. So he may very well even be a part of that saboteur crew. Who knows? Um, I doubt he would be the one risking his life. But, um, it, I mean, it, it could check the mark of rescue civilians, it could check the mark of secure orc tech. Um, yes, but hmm. also we would be going blind. If we were to go into the uh, zone, the the restricted zone, well, we're going to be going patrol, pretty blind either way. Well, with, with the patrol, we know like like kind we kind we we know we know more. a direction. The restricted yeah. zone, we at least, at least know where the zone is. We have no idea where the patrol is. They could have gotten lost and gone way off course. We don't know. We just know <laughs> they went in a direction. The I think facility, we at least pretty much know where it's going to be. I think the main thing is we need more intelligence. We need to understand more what's going on. We're in the blind right now, yes. and we need to unblind ourselves through information. Jeez, the officer. Well, I think we're just discussing between ourselves right now. Okay. Well, we'll ask the officer a game. question. Yeah. Or helmets. Oh, okay, so yeah, you you wouldn't be able to hear any of that. Okay, cool. Also, if we go to handouts, go to the mission too, look at all of our secondary objectives. One of them is uh, disrupting orc reinforcements by sabotaging their ability to call for reinforcements by destroying key communication points and supply caches. Now, would that be... Would that be the same infrastructure as uh, what the Imperium has, or would that be like a separate Enemy. orc thing? Oh, yeah. it, w it would be either like orc taken over, like a repurposed orc stuff. Like if they had taken over the a comm center and just repurposed it as an orc comm center, then that would count for destroying that. Okay. Uh, just, but. Uh, I mean, restoring comms here wouldn't be horrible. But we know it's direct orc activity, so it's... And from what he said, it was only like, what, an hour ago? Or like, not that long ago that this occurred, that he lost contact with the facility? Uh, two, three hours ago. He's been trying to reestablish ever since. And the yeah, Vanguard so... has been lost for three days. Yeah, so this is a uh, an immediate, they're in the area. No, I don't know how far away it is either. Um, mm -hmm. Like how how far away is the the facility from here? Oh, uh, you wouldn't or know. Or the zone? That... Any? How far away is the restricted zone from here? Well, the zone is pretty vast. It's uh, oh, okay. several hundred miles big, just a void of nothing on your gotcha. map. We um, do have we do have a plane though. We do have an aircraft. You do. I say we fly the off. aircraft into the no-fly zone and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> the automated gun defense systems will say hi to us. Right. <laughs> All right. I was in the impression the, uh, the restricted zone was a little smaller than that. Uh-uh. Like, like the size of, big. like, you know, 
Oh, the size of Redstone Base is the restricted zone. But there's a building in that area. Cool. No. All right. So you're talking Far, about like a it's whole like a rest- county or a country size. About like 100 miles. State. Yeah, about 100 miles. Yeah, size of state. 100 miles by 100 miles. Not like, yeah, I guess that would be state size, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's pretty. It's a well, pretty it's big area. State, but yeah. Yeah, it has state, a- yeah. So we wouldn't know where we were, like, where we would be going. Generally, no, and the only one who would know that information is the guy in front of you. Yeah, which we could maybe hopefully coax that information out of, uh, which is possible. Um, if you persuade him, yes. If I can persuade him nicely enough. Um, that's, and... that's, how, that's how we're going to get more information is by talking to this officer. He knows oh, more sure. what's going on than us. Yeah, he's just very reluctant in giving it to us. So if the on the off chance, no, we can't get any information on him. Uh, are we going to risk it and just go off into uh, the restricted zone in search of the thing? Or are we going to, if we can't get information from him, just go after the uh, Vanguard, again, where we don't know? We know about Vanguard slightly more than we do about the restricted zone. So finding Vanguard should be slightly easier than finding the relay system on our own. Let's 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 know. Let's figure out what the officer says. Then let's make a decision, because that is our source of information for now. Even though he's reluctant, we can spend a little bit more time to get more information. Very well. What kind of information are we wanting from him then, other than the location of the mine? The location of the relay, which is on the mine, I presume, or is it different? I, I think it's at the mine. Uh, it might be different. Uh, officer, is the relay? A part of the mine, or is this a separate location? Yeah, we, we also want to know orc sightings as well. He says, <clears throat> I, I can give you the orc sightings as far as intel and the restricted zone. I can't give you too much intel, other than what you guys already hear. Okay, to. well, if orcs are working inside of the restricted zone, we need to know where they are and where they've hit. Uh, he asks, what's your mission again? Do we want to reveal that? It's not exact. I mean, we want to operate quietly, but if he was put here by the Inquisitor... Which he has not provided proof for. Yeah, that's true. Other than well, Captain well, Bowser. Other than, <laughs> other than God told me that, hey, he was handpicked uh, and placed here by the Inquisitor. All right. Also, right. also well, I Captain Malchia said, don't kill him. <laughs> yeah, please do not kill him. You can. <laughs> yeah, he, he says, but he prefers not. No, no, no bloodshed. <laughs> well, he didn't say he was important. He just said not to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he said he talked to the Inquisitor himself, as per the Inquisitor, right? So that means he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the information you're given. That's, that's your information you're given. That is that uh, both the. Both, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, the all captain right. And him is telling you. The Inquisitor put him here. I'm going to I'm going to cut in and say, "Hey, He's listen here, <laughs> listen here, bub. We're a bunch of <laughs> we're a bunch of Death Watch Space Marines. We have to operate under secrecy. So if you want information from us, we ask you first. What's in this restricted zone? Maybe you can share some of your info, and we can share some of ours. What say you?" Uh, shakes his head. He cannot. All right. Let, like, we'll, proper, we'll, proper security clearance for it. This is this is beating a dead horse. Let's be more direct and ask for orc sightings. That will give us more information on what's on the ground. We need uh, we need information on the ground. Okay. So uh, he gives you a data slate. He goes, "This is the last known known location of his patrols." Uh, he goes, uh, "Here's a zone of possibly where that." Drucker Gorfis's main fortresses. They said they've been smacking down facilities left and right, but <laughs> that dude has never been around. Um, they they obviously called for reinforcements. They got him with the Vanguard, the punishment squad you guys yeah, talked about. Uh, they went into the forest, and they haven't come back since. And, he's, and he now knows why he's not able to get any more reinforcements coming in. <laughs> And he thanks uh, the tech marine. You're <laughs> welcome. Maybe next time uh, when you see a, a 
squad of Death Watch Marines roll up, you can be a little bit more cooperative. He just stares at you blankly. <laughs> Brothers, I believe my words fall on deaf ears. Let's shake a leg. Whose? His. <laughs> this poor sap. I don't sap. think you need to get that violent with the man. <laughs> Even if uh, bruises aren't technically bloodshed. Now, Neither would be flamer burns. Well, no. I mean... Hey, there's no need to do it anymore. He let you have access to the terminal, didn't he not? Yeah, but he's I mean, still, he did give you he's still to better terminal, nuisance. So. You still have access to that. So you also can do wait, 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 wait. Hold on one moment. Uh, like, we can just use the terminal. Like, he's not stopping us. We can just like, like, keep him locked or something. Or I don't know. Like, we're not. Like, we can just still use the terminal and determine the dead ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. but he's not. He he can't tell you anything. He's not going to. I'm going to go up to the terminal and I'm going to just roll a tech use and see if I can figure out anything else that's relevant to our mission. Okay, go for it. All right, modifier on you, that. Uh, plus 10, are you trying to figure out what the facility is and where it's at and all that stuff? Yeah. Okay. Giggity. Right. Sweet. Okay, you attempt to, you get to a portion you uh, required uh, essentially uh, auth uh, authorization to access that information. Can I try and hack it? Hack it? Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, All right. Minus, minus 50. Minus 50? Yep. Uh, hold up. This might, this might trigger some security systems. It might. Brothers, I'm going to try and hack it. What this might trigger some security systems. Are you sure you want to do that? It, it, yeah. mm. Maybe if I'm good enough, I can, I can get past <laughs> it. I don't understand how taking an axe to a computer is going to help us in this situation. <laughs> no, no, no. Literally. Not that kind of hacking, brother. I mean the cool the cool Hollywood stuff. What is a Hollywood? What's Hollywood? <laughs> uh, good, good point. That's a word that how I just made up. Hollywood? Is it blessed by the holy emperor of mankind? Yes, it smells holy like wood. blasphemy to me. <laughs> Sounds like heresy. All right? Suck on my holy wood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and hack it. Please don't. <gasps> oh! What? <laughs> oh! And that's with a minus fifty. Yep. And it's uh, with a minus so fifty. You're able to discern, you know. A rough location just through the limited information it's obviously disconnected from the communication relay but you're able to discern where it's at uh, and you're trying to also discern what it is as well uh, yeah. okay so you're able to discern it's a weapons research lab of some sort Ooh, it's it in the restricted zone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's outside of it, clearly. <laughs> On the edge. <laughs> Alright, brothers. Let us go to the restricted zone to find this weapons facility. We really want to, though? We might as well get the reinforcements in the form of Vanguard if we are to go to that uh, restricted zone. So we might go looking for the Vanguard squad. Ooh. You might be and right. Get the, if, get the information from them as well. If it's if the connection is cut off on the source, that may could have been blew up. So it could be. It's possible that the orcs are in the area too. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's very likely they're there. Yes. So then what do we do with the officer then? Clearly, he does not want us to be in that area. Well, well he can't do nothing about it. Yeah, yeah but he also not wanted to announce be... to him that we're going to the restricted zone. We're just going to leave him in here. He also wanted to be transferred off-world, and he did cooperate with us ultimately. So, I don't know. Do much. we want to? Do we want to get him off-world? He, like he, he has a mission clearly like he will he get needs to provide world. more assistance and just he stood aside yeah. yeah it's true 
<clears throat> like he didn't like give us really access. He just stood aside because he didn't want to get his head caved in. <laughs> um, well, no, he forced us to gain uh, authorization from uh, Mal Malekas. The power went out in my uh, <clears throat> house. Uh -oh. oh, nice. Yeah, you know, we had bad storms the other day. Uh, I guess they're doing something. I'm gonna check the fuses. Oh shit! What just uh, happened? Huh? The power went out for Poco. No, switches are fine. So it's definitely the city again. Oh, uh, well, that sucks. Oh shit! So are you just uh, on uh, what Discord with your phone? I can, yeah, but I won't be able to interact with the NPCs or move them. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess it's a role-playing session until power comes back up. Yeah. Uh, right. The bunker also, the bunker's power also went out. <laughs> it got real dark in here, brothers. <laughs> Why didn't we requisition flashlights? My eyes. I can't see. Oh. Uh, but yeah, if you if you guys can look at the guardsmen, there, so, there are. So Boko, huh? if you if you care to go through all the trouble, Moth is saying that there is a Roll Twenty app, like a mobile app. But I wouldn't blame you for not wanting to do that right now. No, I just barely got the. Yeah, I could probably get that up and running, but we should proceed. Yeah. Anyways, um. Yeah, go. Feel free to explore that map. I actually crafted it for this in the this encounter. Or whatever you guys do. All right. I can see some people in the south too. Some cars. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, so I see them too. You see yeah, them? Oh them. yeah, we're talking to them. I saw them from the beginning. I just didn't say anything. Oh. Let's head down there. All right. We're we will. We are near the guardsmen. You see a ragtag group of guardsmen. Um, they've been bloody and beaten. A lot of wounds and uh, wounded individuals. Very dirty, too. Very muddy and just basically crawling their way back to that facility. Awareness if they're being hunted right now? If they're being followed, should I say? Uh, no. You see them trem trembling a lot and looking at each other as like, uh, well, we encounter the orcs out there. They're, they're they're exceptionally interesting individuals. They tell you they had rocks on the, black rocks on their head. They were very sneaky, right? Very what? Stinky. Sneaky. Oh, oh stinky. stinky. Stinky works too. Yeah, they're very smelly, of course. But um, <laughs> no, very I thought stealthy, you said kinky at first. And I was like, no, oh, oh that's no. the way we're going. No, they described to you that, uh, you know, some of the orcs had, like, they're climbing up trees, and some orcs were uh, throwing nets down on people that were, like, crushing and killing people. The nets? Uh, let's see. What else did they describe? They gave you as much detail as possible of what they encountered. Um, they obviously, they tell you, they obviously probably have cloaking devices of some kind. Because the ones they, they did see, they had black rocks in their head, and then disappeared into the forest. Oh man! Mm -hmm. All right. So let's I've, have that. Bio, let's have that scanner uh, running at all times. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'd like to ask. Uh, I'd like to ask the leader, the guardsman, if he knows anything about the uh, civilians that were that were trying to help evacuate. He said there was a there was a village in the area. He doesn't know anything about it other than that it was there. Uh, their mission was to hunt uh, to be a vanguard fort for you guys. Okay. As per orders of the Inquisitor, it says there was a hundred of them from the start. And there's um, all you see is all that remains. Were there any other squads, or is it just yours? Uh, the survivors. He's asking. Yeah, yeah. I'm asking him. Like, were there? Because it's not like there were multiple trolls sent out. So this is just like a patrol. He or tells this you, is all that's he, left. Yeah, he tells you there's about a hundred of us and about uh, ten in each patrol. And as far as he's aware, they're the only ones that he knows. He hasn't seen anyone else. It's like they lost two as well. Lost two men, if that's true. Hmm. 
There again. Hit with guardsmen, and there's hit with. Uh, they lost two guardsmen. It looks like from the patrol. There's eight of the guardsmen instead of ten. Yeah, he tells you no. We weren't a squad to begin with. It's just people he found along the way. Yes. Okay. So this is the remains of all 100 multiple uh, patrols, or all, all, yeah, all 10 patrols. He this is literally all that's left. Yeah. He, are you asking him that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm asking. I'm right, trying to clarify. He shrugs his shoulders. He says, "Maybe I don't know. This is what I found along the way." I see. Okay. So this is the remnants of 100, uh, 100 people force. So we're not sure if there's. Le others left, but their squad has been split. I would so like that's not a good sign. I would like to roll a tech use in place of an awareness check using the Auspex scanner to see if there's like any nearby just life forms. Okay, brother, I spy with my little eye a tree. Ah, oh, shit! I gave the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my roll is an eight, and we're uh, at the south of the map there, Mon. I rolled an eight. Right, yeah, yeah, the very edge of the forest. So, uh, oh yeah, you joined, you joined us. Cool. Yeah. By the yeah, way, I... just to catch Moth up real quick, because he was AFK, uh, this is a group of guardsmen that we found and we're now talking to, and uh, they discuss seeing orcs that were able to cloak and they have black rocks on their head. Also, they're quite injured from the fighting and they might be able to use a med medical they checkup. They were also able to climb up trees really fast. They what? And they there were about a hundred of them in the beginning and that's all that's left for now that we know of. A yeah. hundred guardsmen in the beginning and there's only eight left that we know of. Right. And they could be in different squads as well, so meaning this, these people, the team got split off pretty badly. <clears throat> from the school, people that are here, how how many of you are from different squads? Uh, he says they're, they're from three separate different squads. Of okay, eight. so there's possibly oh, of eight squads in total? No, uh, of the ten. No, no. In that that group of eight, there's yeah. They're from three separate squads. Okay, so there's still seven potential patrols out there. Okay, so our Blood Angel Poth carry is saying, I can patch them up myself or hand out some med kits. The latter would be faster for us if we're in a time crunch. Uh, we're not really in a time crunch right now. Not not, also, uh, not that we are aware of right now. Yeah, uh, I figure this is going to be like a, uh, more of a lengthy campaign. I mean, if we're gonna finding installations and stuff and hunting this guy down. That's not something we can just do in a day. Yeah. Our tech marine did roll an 8 on the scanner, by the way. Yeah, I rolled I rolled an 8 on the uh, on the whole on the, bioform are we about scanner to be or whatever. Check. Yeah. Right. <laughs> At the very edge of your scanner range, you are seeing blips of something move. You're not quite sure what. Big. So I, I grab the scanner and I show this to my fellow uh, Marines. Uh, on Quick, the witch guardsmen, side. get back to the bunker. Marines, head in that direction. Bolters at the ready. Guardsmen right. can't move, though. No, they were crawling back. Like, they can move. Well, they well, can't move because they of... They can't uh, move fast. Well, they can't move because uh, the GM can't move them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because power's out. So that doesn't mean we can't roleplay it. In which yeah. general direction did that bleep come from? Uh, or southeast or west? Where the guards were coming from. So south. South, yeah. More south. So we'll past the edge of the map. Good. Incredible. Something I can't transition if you get because I have the map. Let's see if I can get that app to transition, you guys. Well, right now we can think about what's going on. They are being hunted down. Uh, if the relay system was also ambushed at the same time, they might be closing in on the officer? Question mark. 
that's in that bunker. For three Did hours? Maybe? They've been assaulting this position for three hours? No, 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 no. But the, the, the relay uh, position, the relay... Oh, in the restricted area. But the weapons facility got taken out three hours ago. Yeah. Or was sabotaged, attacked, the, the communication relay at the weapons facility was taken out three hours ago. Um, these people are coming from a separate direction, though, so they're attacked by separate teams of orcs. But it still might be coordinated. Oh, absolutely. You gonna get uh, any more intel off these guys? Well, if there's something lurking around the edge, I'd rather deal with that immediately. We can yeah. always question them after the threat is dealt with. Also, that's right. technically 50 meters away, right? That's this correct. Can... Got a blip. So, we'll in squad formation, bolters ready. Start advancing that way. Okay. Are you still using your little blip sign thing along the way? Yeah. Okay. So, the blip's still there, and you guys are proceeding <clears throat> closer. You can definitely tell it's up above. It's not moving, though. Well, it could be climbed in a tree. True, but... Mm. Which, they just said, they like climbing trees. True. So... Have we identified which tree this blimp is at? The tree? Yeah. Uh, yeah. do one. Yeah, you, uh, you have a general idea what that what that what that technology is using. Modifiers. I believe uh, we should use our chain swords to cut down the tree. That or we too. can just look up at it and shoot at the thing in the tree. I mean, <laughs> right? Let's let's, let's just gotta find the target tree. first. Yeah. We can play uh, lumberjack after we find it. <laughs> So I know, I'll immediately modifier? use the anti-plant missile. No. <laughs> what modifier for awareness? That was plus 20. Uh, and is that a, in addition to our standard plus 20? Yeah, sure. Sweet. So that's plus 40. I passed. That's one. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> As you guys are going into the forest a little more, you guys, the guns are aiming up. You look up, you see what looks like to be a giant uh, gorilla-like thing in the trees. Is it green? <laughs> uh, you assess that it's not green. It's like black, blue, and purple. There's a giant gorilla thing in the trees. It's not it's an orc. Did. Is that a Jokairo weaponsmith? <laughs> no, he'd be orange. <laughs> can, we, can we roll for, like, forbidden knowledge Xenos to figure out what the heck that thing is? Sure. Alright, I'm gonna do that. Modifier? Uh, plus, plus ten. All right. Uh, I don't know. So, I did not get it. Antius did not get it. Sylvester got it. And Dominego oh, got the I, shit I, I out of it. I didn't roll. Hold on. Hold on. I'll roll. Uh, where's the lore? Uh, so, my character would know that it is an indigenous, like, uh, ape-like species on this planet. Very docile unless provoked. Your character thinks that it's an orc, and everyone else who failed thinks it's an orc. <laughs> so you have to convince oh, everyone. Okay, that I it's shoot not it immediately. Okay. <laughs> I shoot it. Oh no! Um, <laughs> roll. If I think it's an orc. I shoot it immediately. Yep. <laughs> Do your damage. Roll damage. <laughs> Oh, I missed. <laughs> oh yeah, Good. you missed. As soon as, he's, as soon as he fired it, I told him to stand down. They're just gorillas. Not orcs. Are you certain, They're brother? just gorilla things. I'm certain. I support our tactical marine. I am a tactical marine. I'm also a captain. tactical marine. <laughs> he said, oh, there was only one. Confirm not an there. orc. Ah, very well then. I shall study it to recognize it in the future. 
Gotcha. <laughs> I spent a full minute staring at it, taking in every detail so I don't make this mistake again. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. I really wish I had my tools. As you're staring at it, uh, you notice that a third arm pops out of its chest and something is thrown at you. <laughs> what the It's heck? hostile. Shoot it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh... It, it throws it at our captain, or it yeah, throws it. Throw, yeah, someone yeah. Will a um, yeah, throws it at, at whoever's standing there looking at it. Me. It's throwing a, the one who shot at it. So. Yeah, it's throwing a crack grenade at it at you. What? <laughs> oh, <grenade>? what? <laughs> I full auto this fucker. <laughs> There's clearly a fork inside that gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on if he's gonna throw a crack grenade yeah, I can do still the... throw the yeah, yeah someone has to do the crack grenade damage all right I'll, I'll do it or weapons weapons um what well, has to actually good. roll to hit me first Shit. right he has a ballistic ballistic skill of i believe 40 so you may want to uh, just get 40. I have, I have, oh, I have 46, so I'll throw it. Okay. Uh, any modifiers? Uh, well, he wasn't expecting that, so... He got a 96, he, he missed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, blows up, it blows up in his hands, and he, and you, it, you see a orc with a black rock on top of his head falling out of the tree, landing on the ground. Oh. Brothers, it was in fact an orc. <laughs> Shoot anything that looks vaguely orc shaped. <laughs> we will genocide these gorillas, whether they are orcs or not. Has the uh, not take the risk in ignoring them? <laughs> has has the black rock? Um, is it intact? Yeah, it's on its head. Might be able to take that. Okay, go for it. One could surmise well, we that a disguise work, is right? almost stealth, sister. Yeah, the, our blood angel apothecary is saying that is not stealth, that is a disguise. Those guardsmen are idiots. <laughs> oh, and pray tell, how many of you thought that that was not an orc? <laughs> Who is an we... idiot for not shooting at it? <laughs> our captain was right all along. <laughs> Right. How, is, well, how is it that we pass the skill and yet still went the opposite? Oh, <laughs> you have disguised it as a gorilla, which is what it was disguised as. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> clearly their stealth technology disguises them as indigenous species, which uh, is what that rock apparently does. So you it also make them invisible, too. Potentially. Uh, we don't know how it works. So wouldn't, wouldn't we pick I'm it up? I'm pretty sure these orcs don't know how it works. Our tech wouldn't marine we... could investigate it. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna grab this <clears throat> rock then and do a tech use. To this see is an orc what tech. The... It might be orc tech, for all we know. Or it could just be a rock it being orcs. <laughs> all right. All right, GM, what's the modifier on that rock? Uh, plus 20. Plus 20, okay. And I also I right. two degrees I also of assist. success. You'll, that, uh, well, that's, that's a good it, question. Did the uh, guardsmen speak like soccer hooligans? Like what? <laughs> Did the guardsmen speak like soccer hooligans and were any of them were particularly large? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. Okay, so I rolled a two. I'm looking at this rock. Rolled two point one. Okay, you look at it. You can deduce that it is a rock, slightly radioactive. Um, no other special properties than that. That's like a black rock of some sort. And it's uh, taped together to that orc's head via vines and other various things to make a full rope. Orc technologies. Brother, so I don't more. see anything particularly interesting about this rock other than the latent radiation. But what I do know is that orcs, when they believe in their technology, it does work how they want it to. Do you know this? Did your character have orc, orc lore? 
Yeah, it's it's in that like uh, common. It's it's like not common story? knowledge at all. No. No. Oh, okay. No, that's like uh, in, like origins of the orc knowledge. Okay. Which standard people wouldn't know that the Eldar and the old ones made them. I do not. Yeah, I do not I understand how Death this White rock works. I can't make any Death sense of it. Death Watch would or would not? Would not. Okay. No. Uh, it, that's, well, it depends on how high up, maybe. Well, like, only, um, like, a very few select individuals, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can probably make, like, we can probably make a Xenos check anyway, uh, with a bit of knowledge. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we'd have a heavy penalty. At minus 50? Okay, well, I'm not gonna try it. Someone else with a high intelligence can, but... I'll give that a try. Yeah, no, I didn't get it. Nope. Yeah, no, oh, <laughs> nobody got it. Well, absolutely let's nobody put got it, it in some kind of containment device that can contain the radiation and take it with us. Uh, if they're using this rock as some form of a method for camouflage, maybe our tech priests uh, back aboard the ship can figure it out. So when the gorilla died, cool. did it turn into an orc? Did its body turn into a green orc body? Or did he like crawl out of the orc's the gorilla's stomach? Uh, yeah, that's what he did. Oh, he crawled out of a gorilla's stomach. Yeah, you blew it. Yeah, yeah. You just saw, basically, the chest open up, the arm pop out, throw it at you. Was the arm green? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how you knew it was an orc. As far as you're concerned, though, it looked like, it looked like an indigenous ape creature. Perfectly was the ape creature perfect. larger than the orc? Uh... Similar stature. Okay, so he just skinned it and was wearing its skin. Probably. Not. He was hollowed out <laughs> inside of its gut cavity. <laughs> like that one scene from Star Wars. Yep. <laughs> These well, black rocks may also be a. Or form uh, Ace Ventura. A, yeah. The, these black rocks may be a form of a, like, tribal uh, accessory as well. It could be anything. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All we know is we've been successfully been fooled. But we know what to look out for. They take the skin of the creatures indigenous here. Just so shoot anything. Shoot with, with everything and kill it, except guardsmen and yes. other humans. If it's a large-ass human, see if it's an ogre, but otherwise shoot it. And even if it's an ogre, maybe shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvester, VR, Blood, Blood Angel, Pothcarry. Blood Angel, Pothcarry says, you can put the rock on your head and see what happens. That's heresy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Death Marines are the Death Watch, uh, are the only, like, uh, Imperial anything chapter that actually has leeway to use Xenos weapons and technology. So it wouldn't be full heresy for us to use it. Right. I don't know, brother. S smells like heresy to me. <laughs> well, if well, anyone no, sister, if you're so intent on finding out what this does, by all means, put it on your head <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> maybe, maybe. What Be forewarned, else? though, if it takes control of you, we will end you. Are you putting perhaps it in your head? Not, perhaps it, not, it should not be put in our medic. Oh, but on someone else, right? Yeah. Oh, then who? I don't. I don't suggest anyone put it on their heads. I'm not putting can, that on my head. don't know what this head. technology does. I can volunteer. Okay. Why? No, little German boy, don't put the rock on your head. <laughs> Too bad. Wait, what, what does it use? What do I need to do? We just, just put it on. Okay, I just put it on. Okay, you lash on your head, you feel some slight tingling sensation on the top of your head, and then that's it. He just puts some uranium up close to his face. It's Forever, no, so it's it no doesn't do anything. It only makes me feel funny. As far as you're, as far as you're concerned, uh, you don't see any differences. You don't look cloaked, and the other players don't see you as cloaked either. You just have this giant rock on the top of your head. 
Take that Wait, rock uh, off your head this, before the long term no, effects I would of like the radiation. To, I would like to break line of sight with everyone and go behind a tree. What? And then put oh, the it's Brooke. I can't see him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the Alright. So you go and do that. You come back out yes. and your brothers see a giant assault marine slumbering out of the behind a tree with a giant rock on the top of his head. Brothers, I too can go invisible if no one looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, uh, enough of this nonsense. Let's just put it in our backpacks and move on. This is a, this is obviously some orc chat tech that we can't identify. Very well. <laughs> Agreed. Well, uh, let's uh, go back to that squad and see if we can't find out where they came from and what direction. Uh, but keep a lookout for more in case this work wasn't alone. Right. Uh, yeah, as you guys get back to the, the, the guardsmen, they ask, uh, uh, what, what do you need? What other information do you need from us? So where were you ambushed? Show us on the map. Uh, so they show you on the map precisely, like, uh, where they're kind of ambushed, or some of them were ambushed. Um, cause there's three groups. They tell you we were ambushed, uh, this location and this location, all varying degrees of, uh, proximity to where that supposed, uh, orc war bosses fortress might be, but none were, uh, too far out before they got ambushed from that location. So we know where the orc fortress is. Supposedly. Roughly. Well, roughly. Well, that's our main objective. Maybe. Well, yeah, they tell they, they they tell you about the other stuff they destroyed, the other bases. You guys, they they gave descriptors that they had um, giant piles of the black rocks and some red rocks. They had uh, weapons strewed out. They had um, what are those? What are those animals called then? Squigs. Squigs. Yeah, they had a bunch of those dead ones, um, and various animal carcasses at these locations. The caches. Um, they they definitely have vehicles of some sort because uh, they're going. You know, off world somehow. Um, that's all I know currently, based off the previous groups that that survived and were integrated with the the Vanguard group. They've been at this for uh, at least a month trying to get this guy's base. But uh, all, uh huh. Say again. Uh, I guess we're, we we know where to head to now. We don't really require that relay station. Uh, well, to deal with that relay station at the moment. Right. Uh. Yeah. And they um. They they yeah they they inform you that all eight of these guys are from the Vanguard forces. So. Uh, anyone who have more intel would probably be the the initial guardsmen that are stationed here. Well, that's all the intel that group uh, knows, more or less. And they they, uh, they also tell you beware of traps out there. A lot of those lost a lot of people to those. Okay. And the the net, the net boys don't don't get entangled by those guys. Net boys. Yeah, they said uh, once they got entangled, that was game over. Uh, have you ever seen Alien vs Predator? That net. Yes. The, the, yes, how it crushes the victim and cuts him up. It does that. Ooh, man. Mm -hmm. That's no good. And, yeah, it goes through armor and everything as far as they as far as they saw. They said it's very acidic and toxic, wherever it is, because they weren't able to free their fellow guardsmen. Went right through their flak armor like it was nothing. Damn. So it's like uh, Tom and Jerry where... Tom runs through the chain link fence and then he's a whole bunch of different squares cut out. Yeah, more or less. More or less. <laughs> who is this Tom and Jerry. who is this Jerry? <laughs> and how were they so horribly eviscerated in your sight? <laughs> I don't know. I've as uh as our path carries pointed out, maybe I'm not feeling too well today. First the holy wood and now Tom and Jerry. 
By the way, are you bringing all third, all three of your your squads with you guys? Did you bring down the ship with you, or are they you going to keep them on the war barge? And call them now when you need them. Uh, I feel like there would be no point in bringing them in right now because we don't even know the location of the fortress. Once we know the fortress, it would be beneficial to bring them in for the final assault. I think I we, mean. I think we should. Uh, offer them safety on that uh, thunder, Thunderbird or whatever transport. No, I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I was talking about your your guys' squads. You guys have three squads available to you. Yeah, the so, three squads you of guardsmen. Bring with you? Yeah, we have three yeah. squads of guardsmen. Yeah, so I don't know. Technically, they... we can send them, send one of them to the relay station for scouting reasons. True. They might not make I it think, back, though. I think it's better to keep them on standby and use them as support uh, if we need to, like, assault the um, any heavily fortified positions, like, kind of as a distraction for us and, like, flank or, and stuff. Or just the, sending them off or to kind of... Yeah, just sending them off to kind of go and die uh, in yeah. an unknown region <laughs> doesn't fully seem like good use. Mm. Yeah, I say we should uh, get him back to the Thunderbird or whatever. So, yeah, but I mean, help patch him up. Yeah, yeah, the eight guardsmen in front of you. Yeah, they'll they'll do all that. Uh, your three squads, though, uh, did you leave them on the war barge to be summoned down, or did you bring them with you guys in the Thunderbolt? Thunderhawk. Um, yeah, Thunderhawk. I, I think we should keep them in the, bar in the barge. In front okay. Of yeah, I feel that's probably better. Yeah, it'd take about 10 minutes to, to reach any location on the planet surface if you call them in. Yeah, probably. it's better just to have them stand by and like an unready. Yeah. Than just with us. Because they'll just die in an ambush, and that's no good. Right. Right. I have a feeling it's just the only people that are going to survive are going to be the Death Marines. Mm hmm. Very likely. If we're gonna bring these our these marines we found and our squad back to the warbringer, should we bring the officer as well? Let them escape. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we take everybody but him. Hey, but the, what the deal was like if you use it, it gives you access, you get him off the planet. I he, said it depends entirely on the support he gives us. Ah, and if it was not adequate, I can't. I can only promise to relay um, to the Inquisitor his usefulness. Gotcha. He's, he wasn't completely useful. He was yeah, somewhat he was... useful. He, he stepped aside and that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> he also gave us some intelligence information. Uh, not we really. got more out of these guardsmen than we did from him. That is a fair point. So We got <clears throat> more out of me hacking the terminal than that guy. Which you probably could have done with... Oh, no, never mind. You, you could have done that with your mind link. Um, but, no, because yeah, it I mean, had a serial said, port the, on it. The only thing he did was just stand aside from the terminal, and that was about it. Well, the worst part is that he was um, blocking us from every step of mm -hmm. finding, get, gathering intelligence. Yeah. So I well, think, unless he does something on his own to actually help us. Oh no! Getting, but he's approaching, he's approaching right the there. yeah, he's approaching the tech marine right now. Again? Okay. 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 And, uh, he goes. I, I see that you hacked into our systems. So he's blackmailing you essentially. That he wants to go off his planet, reassign him. Okay. Wait, what did he say? So the the this. guy. Yeah. What? Mr. Mr. Obstructionist guy uh, has come over and he's blackmailing us now. Okay. Because you're I hacked into their right? systems. Yeah. You what? You're saying all this in your helmet, right? You're not saying it aloud, right? Yeah. Well, yes. I'm I'm saying okay. that to all the t all the other Marines. Mm-hmm. So, he, tells you, he, he goes over the list of violations that just, just occurred and that, like, more than likely the Inquisitor will probably see you executed for your executed. transgressions. Or he's going to sweep it under the rug. 
<laughs> well, you won't. I, I tell you what, um, we'll get you off this world if, uh, if you don't tell anyone about this. I, I intervene. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. This guy has no power over us because he tried, he directly, uh, uh, intervened with our mission and did not provide any support whatsoever. And he actually tried to intimidate oh, again against the death marines. Uh, kind of sort of sabotage our, our, our advances, in, in, honestly. So we could just probably just tell him, you have not helped us in any manner. The fact that you're telling us this kind of violations means that you are not providing any help. Have fun living this planet. True. Right, and he kind of looks, looks at you and is like, you know, I could just transmit this document to the Inquisitor and, and let him discuss it with you all. And we can also discuss transmit. Yes, uh, yes, it would be a shame. However, guardsmen, this officer has <laughs> committed heresy upon the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> I order you uh, to arrest this man and confine him, remove all communication devices, all weapons, and confine him until further notice from us. The Inquisitor will hear about it. Would it not be a shame if that orc disguised as an, an Abe's grenade accidentally hit the officer and ended him <laughs> over helping <laughs> us? That's what uh, our angel pop yeah. carries saying. Oh, man, you got interesting. <laughs> interesting observation. In response to that, I, I'm just having the guardsmen arrest him. Huh? I'm having the guards uh, arrest him and confine him and remove any communicate device. They they all look at you and they all just they they shake their head like we we ain't, we ain't, we ain't gonna get murdered by the Inquisitor. We can use our squad to arrest this officer. Are you gonna use your? You're gonna summon down the thirty guys to then arrest. I the command guys? you. Okay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe, maybe. You gonna term, term the guy? You gonna try to convince them not to blackmail you? You gonna to uh, have the guardsmen charm them, or what? What are you doing here? We're gonna try command. and command the guardsmen to do this. I intimidate. I intimidate them into doing it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I wrote a. I wrote a one oh, I forgot. You don't have uh, access to it, right? So I got a degree of success of negative three point five. Uh, Tactical Marine Cast uh, Castier. I uh, got a negative one point one degrees, and then uh, Karnoff the Black Shield intimidated them with a degree of success of point nine. Uh, they begrudgingly stop that man from transmitting and removes the data slate and place him under arrest. <laughs> They all look at you like, you know the Inquisitor will not like this, right? Oh, you 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 uh, speak with his will, do you? No, <laughs> but they, they inform you that they're under... under un, they're un, they're uh, being punished specifically, right, uh, for their failures prior and all that crimes, whatever, and they kind of explain to you that this guy is like a black ops high-ranking individual this black ops high-ranking individual is actively trying to impede our mission so yeah. if the inquisitor is going to be angry it's going to be at him for his continuous attempts at stopping us from achieving our goals you would be well rewarded by keeping him restrained from any further attempts to interfere with our mission <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, the officer's just cussing you all out at this point, saying it's too late, it's too late, that's that's always iterating. Uh, the guardsmen, they kind of look at each other. You know, um, I can charm them, if, it'll give you a charm roll if you want. With that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Any, uh, any just, bonus or penalties? I, this? I plus, assist him in charming. At least yeah, attempt. Plus, plus uh, 20 on this one. Okay. I don't think that's how charming or, works. I don't think you can assist someone in charming. Sure you can. Can you? <laughs> oh yeah. You both sweet talking them like we got bad job. Okay. 
Well, if I'm getting assistance bonuses from Charming, how much do I get for that? Plus 10. Plus 10. I'll give you plus yeah, I gave you plus, plus 10. You got plus 20. So. Okay, oh, so, so plus 20 in total. Okay, so I'm going to spend a fake point on this to re-roll this. Okay. Because I failed by point three. <laughs> Oh Our play that Blood Angel Kofikari says I can put him in a medical. Now he succeeded with six point six degrees of success. Charm the shit no, out of him. Like if, 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 like, uh, if you can help us out, we'll help. We'll scratch your back too. And they happily put him in a room. I will definitely be giving the the Inquisitor uh, good words for your assistance. Hey, let's let's start healing. And maybe them. let's put him in a coma. That might help too. <laughs> As the apothecary uh, <laughs> has suggested. Yeah, the apothecary said he can put him in a coma. If if they did assist, or they did assist, let's just heal, heal him out. Let the let our uh, apothecary heal them. Well, she already did that. Did she? Did she? No. No. We've no. been here long enough that she probably could have been healing them while we were discussing more things. Well, she said she hasn't been, so there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can start healing them since they're helping us. Yep, we're also Got putting you. the good word into the uh, Inquisitor. And for all we know, this Black Ops dude could be a spy, and he could also be lying. He could be lying he's about doing the everything Inquisitor. he can to get off the planet. Yeah. Right. Well, he's going to get um, off the planet, but not in the way that he uh, hoped wants. originally. Yeah. Right. I agree with that medical coma. Yeah, yeah as you guys are doing all this, you guys get a vox com from Captain Malzius. Nice. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, they well, said, well, uh, I'm saying nice to uh, the apothecary getting an 8.9 degree success on putting that guy into a coma. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Captain Malzius tells you he's gotten word from the Inquisitor um, that you can relieve that, that officer of his duties. Wait, wait, wait. what full, happened? Full authorization. For uh, say that again, Thomas. Yeah, you full authorization. Uh, they, they know of what you guys did, the hacking. They said they give full authorization to that knowledge, and that's it. Do not proceed any further into that zone. Oh, you okay. can relieve that of his duties. Cool. Uh, we were given knowledge, our authorization for the knowledge, uh, but we were told by order not to go into a restricted zone. Cool. We won't do that. Um. This man, though, is committing horrible heresies. So, um. Uh, <laughs> you may relieve him of his duty. So. Oh, that means we can kill him. <laughs> yeah. right. That does. That is what that means. And that is from an Inquisitor. So, uh. So I turn to, uh. So, Sister Zeal. Make this permanent. <laughs> Make this a permanent coma. Her order of the Inquisitor. Make that coma permanent. <laughs> also, she applied first aid to the guardsman and rolled a 9.4 in doing so. Right. Uh, Captain Malsius also uh, informs you, too, that any information you did obtain, it is to be forgotten. Understood, okay. Captain. I uh, relay that to the squad. What information? I don't know no information. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sure Good what thinking. information you're talking about. I think, Excellent I don't think response. there was any to begin with. Right. Uh, <laughs> all they, all the captain asked for is the, is the coordinates to where that facility is, and uh, it will be taken care of. Cool. If it's if the if it's the captain asking, we re, uh, relay such information. Yeah. Hey, uh, go ahead. Do awareness check, all y'all. Can I do the awareness check on go. my tablet thing? Yeah. Good thinking there, Apothecary. Doing what? Oh, uh, the Apothecary is saying may as well keep him in a coma and use him to make a servitor later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's There's incredible. almost no greater crime than impeding an inquisitorial mission. <laughs> so, yeah, it's worthy of being made into a servitor, alright. So, to recap... We have a pretty much a black ops officer refused information as he's supposed to and got relieved for doing his job. Yes. <laughs> yep, that's correct. 
<sighs> so the perfect carry wrote a 4.8. Uh, I wrote a 2.7. Uh, Domenego wrote two points. Uh, uh, Domenego wrote a z- 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 minus 0.5. Uh, you guys on the bunker still, right? You guys on the bunker? Yeah, yeah, we're still on the bunker. Yeah, New Tyrone okay. rolled a seven point nine. Uh, yeah, you hear? Okay, you all succeeded then. Yeah. Okay, you all, you all hear in the distance just no, I don't. A, 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 an ungodly sound of bombardment of some. You definitely can tell it's an over bombardment strike somewhere. Oh, ungodly I amount. I don't notice it at all. <laughs> okay, anyway, it, I'm not noticing is it, it either. Is it, is, it, is it after we relay the information? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So is it a kinetic bombardment? Lasers? What does it sound like? It's a, yeah, it's a, la- it's a lance lance attack. You 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 deduce? I would suppose you. But it's an orbital strike. It's uh, all weapons that that war barge can bear in that location. Holy That's crap! For level. I've only heard about a crater that has existed. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that crater existed prior to our mission, brothers. Pretty sure uh, that restricted zone was just so we don't get cratered ourselves. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on to there's a restricted you. zone. What? Yeah, <laughs> let you know not to get shot by space lasers. <laughs> ah. <sighs> Wait, Thank so you, the bombardment was the weapons facility. Yes. Yeah, the restricted zone. It's just gone. I mean, yeah, your characters wouldn't know that, but you, your, your tell, your characters are intelligent enough to know that more than likely, after relaying coordinates to that base, and then the sub- subsequent subsequent orbital bombardment, that's what was destroyed. Mm-hmm. With with the uh, post haste and vigor from the mm-hmm. ships above. Damn. Mm-hmm. And the nice. guy who wanted to blackmail us to the fucking Inquisitor got, uh, he got the Uno reverse card played on him. <laughs> yeah. We are Space Marines, yes. We don't fuck around with Space Marines. <laughs> yeah. We're space Marines on a mission from the Inquisitor. No, we're not going to give you any pertinent information. Okay. All right, so, um,. We know there's some uh, some orky orcs around. Uh, we know they like hiding in the skins of animals. Uh, we know roughly a direction to head. Uh, Set intelligence. <laughs> Moth Ma- yeah. said, uh, yeah. "That's why you don't dump sat intel." Satellite. Yeah. Don't dump stat intelligence. Oh, he didn't max intelligence. He dumps his intelligence score. <laughs> Yep. It would be also beneficial to seek out the, or try to seek out the remaining uh, guardsmen squads as they can aid us in our final assault on the fortress together yep. with it. But that should still be roughly in the same direction as um, for these guys kind of encountered it anyway. So Correct. Uh, we have a, a destination or we've got a heading anyway. So uh, do a quick gear check. Squadman. Yep. Well, all right. Uh, you can take the Thunderbird up to uh, and uh, deliver this new servitor <laughs> uh, to the Inquisitor. <laughs> Should the guardsmen remain here? Uh, they're very injured. Yeah, they should get checked up on. Yeah, I, it would do better to uh, go up, refit, uh, and be prepared to potentially rejoin in an assault later if they're combat capable. The Warbringer has a medical facility, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, well our apothecary also healed the guardsmen and rolled like a That's... nine point something. Nine point right, yeah, four. They're all, after the apothecary healed them, they're pretty. Uh, Decent shape, but they still probably need greater medical care in the war yeah, bar. Yeah, true. Yeah, the war bar like way, five points for each. So, yeah, yeah, just so you have, yeah, yeah. Just so you have uh, an idea what the war barges, uh, dude. It's a giant floating city in the sky, fortress. Yeah, essentially, tens of thousands of people aboard. 
You got that ship so, and the Falcon class destroyer in the area too. Uh, so we'll uh, I said we instruct them to uh, take the the new servitor up with the Thunderhawk, just so the Thunderhawk doesn't get fucking blown up while it's down here. Yeah. Um, back up to uh, the barge, tell them to get first aid re-equipped, and if they can, you know, join in any of the the three squads ready to come back down here if they're worried about redeeming themselves in the Inquisitor's eyes. But do note that we will give a good uh, recommendation to the Inquisitor that they uh, adequately perform their duties. All right. They did. Yep. Hesitantly. Hesitantly, but yes. Hey. They did. They did. They did. That, and they did get uh, us good information, so. You know, which was their job. Yep. Right, and they did warn you of the, the, the spooky orcs with the rocks in their heads. <laughs> and all the <laughs> net dudes and everything. Yep. Uh, so... I, I do wonder, here. though, where that orc got a crack grenade from. They have those that are lying around. Don't worry about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> crack grenades are not orcish weapons. Oh, I know. So, Boko, you say why. we're going to... There's so many facilities here. They, they salvaged. They definitely uh, salvaged our technology. Yeah, they just salvaged it. You say we're going to end it here. Boko makes sense because your power is still out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still out, and I think it's a good stopping point anyways. Uh, yeah. You guys did pretty good. Uh, let's give you 500 yeah. XP for this. All right. This little... Nice. I think it's a good we... landing point, definitely. So you got, you got the... This land. Right. No, I cool. mean, just, like, setup of the mission and what you're expecting. Yeah, and uh, and turn a, yeah. a, a Black Ops officer into a server tour. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've accomplished so much today, guys. <laughs> well, that be to be fair, personal service tour? to be fair, yes, he please, did. Please, please let him become <laughs> personal servitor. So, to be fair, that guy did want to get off world and did want to get reassigned. He got We've his wish. Careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <sighs> Welcome to 40k. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a very warm welcome. <laughs> Welcome to 40k. Here, let me punch your ticket and take your number. Yeah, they you certainly punch that guy's ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they matter crime. Welcome to eternal servitude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I can't oh, get over God. how funny that is. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, that you, uh, that you uh, totally uh, you, you reassigned them permanently. Yeah, that is kind yep. of funny. Yep. Permanent reassignment for all eternity. I just think the whole situation is funny. Like, first of all, <laughs> he was obstructing us. Then, yeah. then we hacked the system. Then he blackmailed us for hacking it. <laughs> then we got orders from the Inquisitor that he can be relieved of his duties. Then we heard an orbital bombardment destroying that whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. God, that was fucking it's hilarious. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you out of character. I mean, he's no longer exists anymore, but as a weapon weapon research facility, they're uh, doing Lloyd weapons and other various stuff like that for ships. Yeah. So, I did not want it to fall in orc hand. Ah. Uh, I see. But, you can't metagame with something that doesn't, doesn't really right. exist no more, so. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, no matter what it would have happened, that facility would have been destroyed. Eh, maybe. Uh, no, no. No, not really. Not necessarily. It could have fallen into orc it, Not, you know... Than anything yeah. else, we could have gone towards it and uh, uh, try and encounter orcs that way. It was just the path that we could have gone, but instead we had it destroyed. We yeah. burned that bridge with enthusiasm. <laughs> with extreme <laughs> but, I think I think we burnt that bridge with servitude. <laughs> no, we made a right, servitude. right because uh, one will be made. The, the, 
<laughs> right. The Inquisitor had no proven knowledge that that the, the that that facility was overran by any means until the until the Inquisitor uploaded his uh, his report, like he did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks to so as as that, what's up? So thanks to Taz figuring out that the communications were down, they just assumed that this facility is gone and they just destroyed it. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's how I was setting that up. It was like I was like, yeah, he wouldn't have knowledge that's that's previously down because it only just happened. Now he's being informed it's down, and that uh, he's essentially trying to kill the kill team. So I was like, nope, they're more they're a uh, more important asset than he is. Yeah. And the facility's gone, so blow it up anyways. Yep. Hush, hush. So. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed that session. Yeah. yeah. Well, turning a guy into a servitude in that fashion was pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> oh, man, that was something. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, well, I'll we'll see all of you guys next week then. Yeah, same. All right. Yeah. All right. And hopefully I have fun so we can do a combat. I was hoping to do combat today. <laughs> uh, we right. did. Just we in, uh, in did. normal fashion, the uh, the orc blew himself up. Uh, it seems he's taking <laughs> a lot of uh, strategic cues from uh, that Tyranid hive that we just fought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm still not 100% <laughs> sure you're not a librarian. Yeah. <laughs> they may be. <laughs> I gotta keep my secrets. <laughs> yeah. Boom! Oh, kills him. Sorry, you a dark angel. <laughs> God damn. All right. All right. Uh, well, I'll uh, see you. See I'll you see all week. you guys next week. That was a lot of fun. Oh, Catch yeah. you later. Yeah. I'll yeah. definitely have more content. Uh, all right. See you. All right. See you. Alright, later. Tschüss.